Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santinetti, and on today's Bible segment, a nugget today is still put your face in the Torah, and we're looking at Psalms 119, verse 69. The proud has forged a lie against me. I will keep your commandments with all my heart. The proud has forged a lie against me. I will keep your commandment with all my heart. This particular week, my wife and I, this verse of scripture became more alive because of the things that are going on around us. And you know something about the proud? When you look at what they do, you will find that the best thing they know how to do is to forge lies. And the thing about lies is that they'll take two different compartments, forge a lie, and put them together as one, even though they don't make sense. But we as the righteous must answer with wisdom from on high and in the scriptures. The word proud here is very interesting because it is the word Z. It's two letters. It is the the Zayin, which we have already gone over, and the Dalet. It represents a sword that goes through a door. And see, that's what people would try to do to you when they're walking in wickedness, when they're walking according to their carnal mind, their sword will try to get through your door. But you must be diligent and always have in mind and in, and in heart the armor of God. You know, the Bible says that we are to put the belt of truth around our waist and shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We must put on the breastplate. Amen? And we must also take the shield of faith. We must put on the helmet of salvation and take the sword of the Spirit. And people stop there. But if you go to the next verse, it says, and pray in the Spirit. One of the things that I, particularly me, I think about the, the armor is the helmet. It's the helmet of salvation. So I have a little saying that I put together. Maybe you may want to spread it around. When you're helmet, put on the helmet. Because everything that comes against you as a Christian is to destroy your honor, to destroy your name and your fame. You see, God has given you a name and the Bible says that a good name is better than the finest perfumes. And the proud are arrogant. One thing I've learned in this life is never magnify, and I am still learning that, never magnify a difference of opinion. And remember this also, that recklessness is born out of arrogance. And the proud are arrogant. Let's look now again at the word pride, zed, the boiling of a soup or something that is intense coming up. You see, this is what proud the proud does. Now, I've heard many people say that the pride is the original sin. Well, I, I differ with that a little bit because when I look at Scripture, it's lust. When you look at yourself and you lust after yourself, then you become pride. You become prideful. And so we have to be careful. So the proud has lifted up their voice. They have forged a lie, he said, against me. A lie. Remember that Satan is the father of lies. And the best thing he, he knows how to do is forge lies. That's what he did against Jesus and all the disciples and all the work of God. He's always forming lies. But we are wiser than he is because the wisdom that we have comes from above, not from here. Now, the word here, forge, means a sewing of a garment of lies. So, Remember, remember that a garment is not easily put together. It's something that takes time. First, you have to make the pattern. Then you put the stitches in the pattern. And then you put the garment together. You notice the formation of how the enemy comes at you. He starts with a little bit here and a little bit there. And this is what he does. He moves people who are not in control of their emotions and their thoughts. It's easy to move them to become prideful and forge lies against you. And the reason that people forge lies against you is because they're jealous and they're angry at your success. They're angry on how you have grown. They're angry at what you're saying. And let me just say this also. The reason that they killed Jesus 
is because of what he said. Jesus even asked the people of his day, he said, for which one of these works are you stoning me? Why do you want to kill me for these works that I do? They said, we don't want to kill you for the works that you do, but for what you said. Because he said that he was the son of God. He made himself equal with God. <laughs> you know, today when we say we're sons and daughters of God, some people may take it as an offense because we're connected to a higher place. I don't like to use the word higher power, but a higher place, and that's his throne. God is the only power. Every other power after that, after that is under his submission, whether they be principalities, dominions, whatever it is, it's under his authority. Remember, all power is submitted to the authority of God. And that's what you have to remember. God has given you jurisdiction. He has given you exousia in the Greek power, or rather authority over all the powers of the enemy. You don't have to fear him. He really can't do anything to you that God has not allowed. I remember one man said it this way. Oh, hallelujah. I'll, I'll never forget it. He said he would go out and testify and he would go to the gangs and all these places. He was an old man at the time. He says they would threaten me and he would tell them, you can't touch me. Unless God gives you permission to touch me, you can't touch me. And that's what I tell people. I don't care who it is. You can't touch me unless my father gives you permission to touch me. And if you touch me, it's because he has given you permission to touch me. Just talk to Joseph. You know what? Joseph can tell you a whole lot about that because his brother became, his brothers became arrogant. They became proud. And what happened? The Yetzahara, the evil intention, the inclination of evil began to rise up like filthy waters and it, over, it overcame them and they could not get out of it. That's why whenever you are going to say something or do something, be very careful what comes out of your mouth that is not coming out of pride. So here, it was a garment that was sewed together. And when they put that garment on, watch it. They're out to get you. And he said, they have forged lies against me. Wow. What is a lie? Well, let's look at the Hebrew. Did I look at the word forge in the, in the, in the Greek? I'm sorry, in the Hebrew? Here it is. I'm sorry. It is tefel. And basically what it is this. This is what the letters represent. A snake, a serpent that has an open mouth that has elevated himself above you. He wants to become the master teacher, the tet, the fe, and the lamet. He wants to become the master teacher. So remember that. The arrogant people, all they want to do is be above you. What is a lie? Well, let's look at the word here. A lie in the Hebrew is the word shakar. Shakar. Wow. It is a destructive letter of fire and teeth. It is the letter that, watch this, is supposed to be holy, but is not holy. It is the opposite of holiness, and it is the resh, which represents the head. Again, people who forge lies are about you are twisting the truth against you to become the head, the leader. Be careful where you thread. And he says, they have forged a lie against me. And he says, but I, Anoi, O-N-E, I will keep. The word again here is the word Natsa, Natsa, Natsa. And listen, it is Anun, it is the, the Sari, and it is the Resh. Now, in a good sense, this is supposed to be representing a man or fish or people of righteousness which are like God, the leader. But notice, because they have come against him, or whoever it was, they say is David. They came against him with the purpose of destroying him as a man, destroying his righteousness, and destroying his leadership. You see, that's what the enemy wants to do. Destroy you as a person, destroy you in your righteousness, and destroy you as a leader. The Bible says in, in John chapter 10, Verse 10, he says, the thief comes to kill, to steal and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and life more abundant. Let's look at, here, let's look at the word here. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2, pride comes, then shame comes, but with the lowly is wisdom. Wow, 
what happens when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God? He gives us strength. He lifts us up. And also in 11.3 of Proverbs says, The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the crookedness of traitors shall destroy them. And this is the beautiful thing, that when you're going through a time when people are being proud over you and against you and speaking things against you, you can stand still. Like my wife said yesterday in the scriptures, Psalms 46, verse 10. Matter of fact, let's go there. Hallelujah. It says, Be still and know that I am God. Why? Watch this. Be still and know that I am God. I will be praised among the nations. I will be praised in the earth. So she says, sometimes you got to just stay still when people are attacking you. Why? Because God is fighting your battles. And actually the word still in the Hebrew means to be slothful. <laughs> what does that mean? It means to throw yourself back on God and just lay back, you know, like you, when you do it in a, in a lazy chair. You know, when you get into a lazy chair, every muscle is relaxed. You throw yourself back in that chair because that chair is full of comfort. And that's what be still is. Put yourself in the hand of God and just relax. Take it easy. Don't get uptight because God is fighting your battles. Amen to that. I'm going to read another verse of scripture before we go. In. James, remember when I told you that our wisdom is higher than the wisdom of the evil. Who is wise and knowing among you, James says in chapter 3, verse 13. Let him show his works by his good conduct with meekness of wisdom. Watch this. But if you have bitterness and jealousy and strive in your hearts, do not glory and lie against the truth. Verse 15. This is not the wisdom coming down from above, but it is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Verse 16. Going down to 17, 18. For where envy and strife are, there is confusion in every foul deed. Wow, this is evil. Watch this now. Look at you. But the wisdom that is from above is first truly pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good, fruit, and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Here it is. 18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons and the children of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I will keep. So here he says, be careful because we are to keep, we're to protect ourselves even in the time of trouble. And again, the word keep means to be one as a fish of righteousness, walking in the leadership of God, the guidance of God. I will keep your precepts. And again, we go, this word precepts comes over and over again. It's the word pakad, and it means to be an overseer. The role of an overseer is to watch, to over, over, uh, over things, to direct it, to command it, and to chastise. So remember, at times God says, you have to chastise yourself. You have to discipline yourself. You have to bring your flesh under. Paul said, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not become a reprobate. The word there really is disqualified. And it's not talking about salvation, but disqualified from ministry, disqualified from the message that you're speaking. Okay? So watch this. I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. I love this word whole. Wow. I love it. I love it. Here, the word whole here is a simple, it's coal. And it means entirety. It means everything. Totality. I will keep your precepts in totality. Everything about me wants to keep your precepts with all my heart. And here the word heart is leb, and it represents the house of authority of the shepherd. So you are the house of the shepherd. And with your totality, everything that you are, keep it. Now, I want to share one more thing, and then I'm going to close. Desire is a very important word. And let me share this with you. The Lord showed me something. There were times that I got angry and I did things, or I wanted to do things rather. I wanted to do things that I shouldn't. Especially when people get you angry and you know that you can bring harm to them. See, I grew up in Harlem. I didn't grow up in a soft place. I walked the streets many, many years. Yes, that's right. The person you look at, I sold drugs, took drugs. I did everything out there that I could. And so I know what evil is. And you know, one time I was confronted by a gang where, where my wife and I used to live. And we were, we were in ministry there. 
and the people that we, that we befriended became enemies to us, especially to me because I began to speak against what they, was, what they were doing in truth. And I'll tell you what they did. They busted the windows of my car. They gave me flats. I mean, they were continually persecuting us. And let me tell you something. One of them challenged me to a fight. And I said to myself, I went upstairs and I looked out the window because they were hanging out. And I told God, I want that one. See, that was the street thug coming out of me. I wanted him. But I began to pray because the Lord said, I want you to bless your enemies. How? The Bible says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbors and hate your enemy. But now he says this, now I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to those that hate you. And pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. And I began to pray for, the, for that gang. I began to pray for those people. And I made up in my mind that if this man came up to me in the street and he wanted to fight me, I made up in my mind I was going to get on my knees right there in the street and tell him, if you want to fight me, you got to come down here because I fight on my knees. I fight in prayer. Well, behold, we had moved out of that situation. We didn't see deliverance completely, but we moved. And a time went by. And I remember, I told God, I remember that situation, and I said, Lord, I've never seen you deal with my enemies. You said that you do, but I've never seen it. Well, one day, I said that, I went to the gym, and I saw one of the guys that were hanging out with them, and I just began to ask him, well, how's everybody in the block? How's everything going? And I, I mentioned this specific person, and he told me, didn't you hear about him? I said, no. He said, he got into a car accident, and he's in a wheelchair, and I did not rejoice in that. I felt bad. And you know what God said? Don't mock me. I deal with your enemies in my time. See, the proud had risen up against me. But the Lord dealt with him in his time. And I want to say to you this morning, doesn't matter what you're going through in life, God has you. One brother said, God's got you. He's got you in his hand, and he's not going to let nothing happen to you. God bless you. Have a spirit-filled day. And remember, when the prowl rises up against you, let him rise. You go low and wait on God. God bless.